Hey guys, DW Berman here with another Lightwave video. Lightwave 2018 just came out recently, last week. So I'm taking a look at it now, loading in an old scene and kind of going through a couple of things that uh, might cause issues. Uh, so here we have our scene. It's a test scene. It's an older version of the scene actually, but it tells us what we need to see. Um, we have uh, very flat shading on things. This kind of like uh, diffuse texture on on this so that it kind of has more of a paper paper look to it. If I come over to the lights or go to the scene editor, I have these extra lights I can turn on if I want the effect, which is pretty nifty. Just kind of give us a little more life to the scene so it's not quite so flat. Um, just kind of a, a mixed media type look perhaps. Uh, let's take a look at the scene in 2015. So I'm going to load the scene here, load recent scenes. Page setup, we have this note here saying, hey, this is from an older version of Lightwave. Do you want to make a new copy? If you click yes, it'll ask you to create a folder. You create a folder and it loads the new, the, it copies all of your assets into that folder. So at least that's what it's supposed to do. If you have two scenes from the same project uh then it's gonna have to it's gonna want to create a new folder for each time you use this so you'll probably just want to copy your assets over uh, manually at that point um i'm gonna click no i'm not gonna save this you can tell right away i'm missing a plugin i have not tried loading the dp kit or dp filter or whichever one dp mixer comes with um if it's quite possible that it doesn't work anymore i'm gonna click no on that says it can't uh, load the node Lambert or Fong. Those are, at least Lambert was built in, uh, Fong, I'm not sure. But I don't think I'm using either of them actually, so that shouldn't matter. Um, basically all of the shaders in Lightwave are gone in, in the node editor. So uh, they completely rewrote the, the render engine and the lighting engine and uh, it's really cool, a lot of great stuff there, but it does break a few things. So let's turn on the uh, shader now, VPR now, and you can see uh, it's not anything close to the original. You can see I don't have our uh, our flat shaded thing on the character, and our wall has uh, much more shading and contrast on it. I'm going to uh, shift click on this to uh, bring up the surface, go to the node, and you can see I do have a Lambert, but it's plugged into nothing. So this is in 2015. So basically all we really have to do is uh, plug our image into this gradient that has this uh, incidence with a dark red to kind of give us an edge on it. And that goes into diffuse shading. So let's take a look at that in 2018. Basically all the surface for the shirt and the head are the same. So we'll just take a look at this again. You can see Here's all that's hooked up. We don't actually have a uh, diffuse shading uh, place to plug anything in anymore. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to plug this gradient into color and we'll get to uh, the diffuse uh, a different way. And it actually doesn't really make much of a difference in this case because I don't actually have the uh, diffuse shader to plug it into and I have it set up in the texture layer. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Let's take a look at that. One way we can make that work is to uh, change the shading model to cell. And now it's giving me, I can do the same thing for the shirt. So there we have our cell shaded and we can still see our texture through it. I don't really want the cell shaded. If you remember, it was flat shaded. But what I can do with this uh, cell, um, shading method and I'll also point out that when you first open this it may look like this or it may even look like this so you have to open it up to in order to change these keys where they're positioned um, but if you want to actually be able to change the color of those keys you need to click plus again and that will open it up in full but what I want to do is I want to just get rid of these I just want these to be one solid color and that'll give me one solid color across the entire Thing. And I can even raise the color of this. I guess I do have to open that up. 
if I want to raise that up to 255. So there we have our flat shaded color on that. And since these surfaces are basically the same, I'm just going to paste these in. Uh, one thing I should point out is that if you change the shading model, I don't need shadow catcher, I'm just saying if you change it, then you lose the settings that were in the other shading model. So I'm not sure if there is a way to save those. That's kind of a problem, I think. I just hit F8 to load my surface preset, and uh, yeah, I don't really think that'll... Uh, I don't know how that works. Anyway, um, it's kind of a shame that doesn't persist when you try changing, but once you get it set the way you want, don't change it. But I did want to leave it with these zones here to uh, illustrate something. If I come over to the scene editor and I add in my lights again, you can see everything's looking fine still, but when I load in a console light, things go black on the cell shaded stuff, which is not very good for what's not what we want at the very least. What's going on here? Well, it turns out if I come over to intensity fall off and I change it to inverse distance from off, then uh, it fixes it, but I'm still not out of the uh, out of the woods on it. You can see I still have this black spot on this guy's neck. Let's zoom in so you can see it better. Looks like I need to work on the guy's hand too. And if I turn uh, more lights on, then I may have uh, even more of an issue. Well, I definitely will because I haven't set those to uh, inverse squared. Uh, if I uncheck edit nodes, that takes care of the issue. So the problem is somewhere in the nodes. So there it is with uh, intensity fall off off and nodes off. So if I go to edit nodes, even though intensity fall off off is turned on, I still have the old value from the old scene or the old sur yeah, from the old scene because it's a light. And that has the linear intensity fall off plugged into the illumination color. If I double click that, you can see it's one meter. If I change this to a different value, then that issue goes away. So there's something going on uh, with the linear distance plugged in, even though intensity fall off is off. What happens if I, yeah, if I just raise the nominal distance, that takes care of it too. But, uh, yeah, so Eve, so there are some issues. Like I said, they reworked the render engine so that uh, the lights, uh, so that the lighting system and the surface shading and, and all that stuff, it's it's been reworked. So there's some issues and this is a case where there's one. Uh, the other issue is uh, this background doesn't have that paper texture on it anymore. You know, it's basically the diffuse. So let's take a look at that one and see what's going on with that. If I uh, open the node graph on that, you can see I don't have that mixer node anymore. So let me expand this so we can actually see what's going on. Now what the mixer node did is it uh, took our, uh, this is our, our our illumination mat, we can say, our luminance mat, or mat, uh, art, uh, texture, map. Ah, wow. Um, and it multiplied this uh, crumple texture over it. So I already had it up, but you can say type in the top mixer or mix, and then drop that in here. Invert goes over top, color goes there, and we can plug this into diffuse because that's where it was before. It's too strong. Let's change the blending mode to normal, or, or sorry, multiply, and then the uh, uh, make the opacity 30%. So that gets us back to where it was before. 
Uh, again, we may need to change uh, play with our lighting to get the, the room as evenly lit as it was in 2015, but uh, at least this gets us most of the way there.